Just quickly before we get into this review, I am very excited to let you know that my new book, The Art and Making of Fantasy Miniatures, is out now. The book is a showcase of over a thousand professionally painted fantasy miniatures and artworks accompanied by commentary from the creators and designers. It's available from all major online booksellers and I'm sure your local game store or bookstore can also order it for you. But I'll put a link in the description that will take you to a page with direct links to where you can order the book from all online sellers worldwide. So if this seems like the sort of book that you or someone you know may enjoy, definitely check it out, and even if you can help spread the word, I absolutely appreciate it. This is a review of The Art of Brutal Legend, which admittedly was not a game I'd even heard of before seeing this book, and even then I kind of ignored the book for the longest time because I was like, eh, I ain't no metalhead. But then I actually had a look through it, and just in the first few pages I was nodding my head thinking, yeah, and then in no time at all it's got me headbanging. And as a result, this book's now sort of responsible for launching a real interest in metal album covers and visuals that I previously never had. It's always so rewarding when you have your horizons broadened a little and find a whole new world for you to discover. And even though I'm sure most people watching this will already be fans of the game, but for anyone who isn't and just clicked on this video out of curiosity, I can promise you need no prior knowledge of this game to enjoy this book. Like all the best art books, it can stand solely on the strength of the quality and content of the art presented, as opposed to just being a keepsake for fans. However, if you are a fan, then you're in for the biggest treat of all. So the first thing that caught my eye was the graphic design for this book is absolutely impeccable. From the dust jacket to the cover beneath, all through the interior, there's so much cool stuff going on. Shiny chrome ink everywhere, even for a lot of the background sketches, blood spatters, scratches, just ink and textures and lines and grit everywhere, it's really well done. And I mean, the reality is, all these background graphics are just an illusion of content since, in and of themselves, they're largely uninteresting. But it makes the book look and feel a million times better than just dreaded blank space, which otherwise would have been a huge issue for this book. So just having those graphics, which, like I said, really just amount to background noise, is actually responsible for a lot of my positive feelings towards this book. Because I just love seeing when the effort has been put into making sure that the design of a book is being used to accomplish complement the main visuals and create a much stronger, more tailored experience. As opposed to art books that just slap the images on a white page and call it a day. And there's not anything wrong with that approach. As long as the main event is good, you don't necessarily need a cherry on top. But if you are willing to go that extra mile and have the design for the book enhance the vision, then as this book shows, you create a much stronger, much more rewarding experience that provides such a wonderful antidote to the you can just see all this online argument. It makes it more special, it gives you more of a reason to buy and treasure the book. And so it's no surprise that such an immaculately designed book is thanks to Insight Editions, who at the end of the previous decade were producing the best designed art books in the industry, albeit with the worst binding in the industry, as opposed to nowadays where the binding is better but the design quality has dropped somewhat. And so Insight Editions made this book and were set to release it in 2009, which is when the game came out and you could pre-order it and everything. But then, for whatever reason, the book was delayed indefinitely slash cancelled until four years later when it was resurrected and published by Udon Entertainment. If you're a fan of video game art books, then Udon Entertainment should be a publish that is familiar to you as they consistently release some of the best video game art books available, especially for a lot of Japanese developers. I'm never sure how much design work they do versus just translating and distributing the books. In fact, I emailed them three times about that and received no response, but at the very least they have a good eye for what books to publish. One thing I noticed they dropped the ball on was the page numbers. I get the impression they're supposed to be styled like a timer on a music player, or maybe it's meant to be like how biblical verses are referenced. Whatever the case, it's a really cool idea, but they screwed it up. It doesn't make any sense since timers go to 60, not 100. It hasn't been implemented correctly anyway, and contradicts what's on the contents page. This isn't an actual criticism, and shouldn't have any impact on your opinion of the book. The page numbering is still completely functional and easy to reference like a normal book, but I just wanted to mention it for the sake of pointing out a goof. One thing that may not come across very well in this video is just how big this book is. It's a square foot, which I can only assume was a very deliberate decision, so that it would be the same size as a 12-inch album cover, which is just complete novelty 
feet, but in the best possible way. Actually, I chalk it up to what I was saying before about using compelling design to further enhance the book's identity and the overall experience of the book. Having such a huge book works really, really well for some of the more epic pieces, giving them the full impact they deserve, and you can see and appreciate every line of the art. You can make out so much detail in the crowd shots and the environment art, and it has an effect you couldn't possibly achieve in a smaller book. However, while I do really like the idea of the square format for this book, and I wouldn't change it, the reality is a square page is the worst format for a book. Most things in life tend to be longer than they are wide, or vice versa, and most artwork and images reflect that. Characters, weapons, cars, buildings, landscapes. So no matter how many or few portrait and landscape images you put on the page, more often than not, it's going to force a lot of blank space, which becomes especially glaring for a book of this size. Although again, this is why it was such a wise decision to have so much background design trying to mitigate that, which it does wonderfully. But background graphics shouldn't need to be doing this much heavy lifting and saving a book's design from failure. And so, background elements aside, for too many of the pages, there is a lot of empty space layout rarely being maximized, and too many sketches and simple images that are taking up an unnecessary amount of space, sometimes a whole page, which results in the sensation that the content is being spread too thin for a book this size. Now, it has over 600 image, which sounds amazing, and is, for a normal book. But most normal books have smaller pages and fewer pages, so for a book of this size to only have a little over two images per page, again many of which are just sketches and simple concept, it can give the feeling that you're being cheated. So I think they very easily could have either a reduced the number of pages and therefore the price just through slightly better layout and sizing of certain images, or b my preferred option, add more images. Or, if that wasn't possible just because maybe this is all the good art they produced, then at least add more text, which is really something this book could have benefited from. Because the fact is, there is very little text, which is fine for an art book, the images should always take precedence, but in this instance, they have plenty of room for more text, which would have helped make it feel like you're getting a quantity of content proportional to the book's size which is really something that could have pushed this book from a 9 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. However, that would also require that the text be a lot better, since as much as 50% of the text that is in this book is absolutely worthless. It's mostly just explaining the story and characters, which as someone who hasn't played the game was vaguely interesting in terms of getting some context. However, that's not the audience the book should be catering to, and so I was just acutely aware of how tedious most of the text would be for someone who's actually played the game. One exception to that is a section called Legends, which lays out the epic background mythology of the world. And I do know this actually appears in the game, however, the way it's presented and having it in book form is really cool. And then the other half of the text is basically quotes from the artists, which they really could have used more of as they are the most interesting part of the text. But the quotes are always so short they never get the chance to go deep enough, and so they end up just feeling like sound bites, which kind of feels inexcusable given that more text with more depth would have been very easy to do since they certainly had the space. And because, based on what there is, it's so great reading about all the varied inspirations they drew on for all this wild stuff in the game. But ultimately I think I would have liked the text in the book to have a more clear direction, whether that would be making this a sort of, you know, full-on in-world lore book like we've seen for other games, which I think would have been really cool for a game like this or not worry about any of the sort of story and characters in the world and just have this be a sort of um, behind-the-scenes non-fiction type book. Because at the moment it really feels like it has the potential to be one or the other, but it's just not doing either of them satisfactorily. But ultimately that disappointment with the text doesn't really matter since we're here for the art and the strength of its visual appeal is absolutely what made me fall in love with the book. I just love how it takes its cues from metal album covers where you have artists cherry picking different genres for their most badass visuals to create this eclectic larger than life vision. It doesn't have to make sense, it just has to be awesome and the art in this book does just that. Every time 
time you turn the page you're just hit with something that is just so cool. Obviously the ultimate way to experience this book is with an appropriate soundtrack accompanying it, but that may result in a braingasm too intense for mere mortals. In fact, since this book is trying to be so evocative of an actual album and as we've established it has the space and needs the content, it would have been really cool to have a running playlist throughout the book to get an idea of what the artists were listening to when they created the art which is actually something I did with my first art book, Rockabilly Psychobilly, which, now that I mention that, I think one thing I really responded to, despite not really being a fan of metal before coming to this book, is that The Art of Brutal Legend, while thematically different from my book, shares a very similar lowbrow spirit of being hardcore, but also not taking itself too seriously. Presenting more adult themes, but in a cartoonish style, is something that I think is just so much fun. Lowbrow, cartoon, fantasy, and horror art are my absolute favorites, and this book has all of that in spades. In fact, I was trying to think of some recommendations to go with this book, but there really aren't many. I mean, there have been a couple of album art collections like And Justice for Art Volumes 1 and 2, Heavy Metal Thunder, and The Art of Metal, all of which are well worth checking out, but perhaps a little too broad for my interests. What I specifically responded to in Brutal Legend and my favorite metal album covers is more the epic fantasy and horror illustrations, whereas these books have a lot of photographic covers or the more surreal style illustrated covers, which I'm not a fan of. And if you're of a similar mind, then I think you have to start looking more to books on the artists themselves, like definitely Orgasmatron by Joe Patagno. And I mean, Frazetta's art books might seem like an obvious recommendation, but I think at that point it's starting to move too far away. I only like giving recommendations as similar as possible, which is why I'll only reluctantly also mention the art book for the animated heavy metal movie, but that's not really a good book and far too sci-fi for my tastes, which is why I'm personally so glad Brutal Legend basically rejected sci-fi ideas in favor of more sword and sorcery and gothic horror aesthetics. But maybe there are some better informed metalheads who can let us know in the comments of any other book recommendations. But I think in terms of the specific look and feel and energy, this art book is really in a class of its own, which is why I'm really surprised there hasn't been a sequel yet because it's still such fertile ground for a game. I mean, even a Brutal Legend comic, or definitely a miniatures game, would be awesome, but even as someone who has never even played the game, I still have my fingers crossed for a sequel, however unlikely that may be at this stage, just for the possibility of getting another art book as incredible as this one.